In Creo Parametric, you can define the manufacturing models for a sand casting. In this situation, I have a core and a cavity, a sand core, and also the result of the casting process. If you've seen my videos on injection molding, the process is very similar, but there are some differences. In this video, we're going to take a look at starting off your manufacturing model, bringing in your reference design model, defining your workpiece, and applying shrinkage. Let's start off by taking a look at the design model that we want to cast. So here I have a valve body, and there's one coordinate system that is already visible. I'm going to use that coordinate system for locating this part relative to the manufacturing model. And I want you to take a look at the Z direction of that coordinate system. When I'm going to cast this, I sort of want it lying on its side based on how I want to pull it apart. You can see that we do have this area in here and because of the undercuts, we wanna make sure that it is perpendicular to the Z direction. Let's start off by going to the new icon and then I will choose manufacturing as the type of model. We have a variety of different subtypes over here on the side. For injection molding, the choice would be a mold cavity but for a sand casting, you want to use the radio button for cast cavity. So let's start off by changing the file name. I'm going to call this my valve body sand casting. And you can give it a common name. There's also the option here to use a default template. I'm going to uncheck this because I want to use a metric system model. The default in my computer is to use an imperial system model. Let's click the OK button. And then this opens up the new file options dialog box. Here it is using that inch pounds manufacturing model. I will use the browse button to find the one that I want. And on my computer, I'm going to go to the C drive. And in my load point for Creo Parametric, I'm currently in Creo Parametric 9.0. If you go into the common files folder in the load point and then templates, here it shows me the different available models. And I mentioned that I want to use the metric system. Also, you have a choice between absolute accuracy and relative accuracy. Well, we definitely want absolute accuracy for manufacturing. Now I will click the open button and then click OK. And now I am in the manufacturing environment. You can see in the graphics area, we have an indication of the pull direction along the Z axis. Now we will bring in our reference model. If you take a look at the ribbon over here on the left, I've got a drop down. You can choose different options like to mirror a reference model, create a reference model from scratch, assemble it, or you can locate it. I'll use the locate option. Let me go back to my working directory. Here is the valve body. Now I will click on open and then we get our create reference model dialog box. And so there are a few different choices in here. You have the ability to merge by reference, which will just bring in the Boolean addition of all the geometry from your reference part into your reference model in the sand casting. You could use the same model itself. And here's the option for inherited. I like inherited because it does that Boolean addition of the geometry, but it also brings in all the features in the model tree. We have our design model listed here, and then it gives a default name for the reference model. I'm fine with that name, so let's click the OK button. And now we've got the dialog box for orienting the model. I will start off by clicking on the preview button, and right now I can see that we've got the pull direction, but I've got that area that is going to have undercuts. I want that rotated 90 degrees. So I'm not using the correct coordinate system in this particular situation. So if we take a look in the layout dialog box, you have the reference model origin and orient, and it's using the default coordinate system in that part. I will click on the little pick icon and it opens up the model in its own separate window. I'm going to pick that coordinate system that has the proper orientation of the Z direction. 
and then I can click on the preview button and it rotates at 90 degrees. So now it's on its side the way that I want it to be in the sand casting. You have the ability to change the layout origin. If you take a look in my model tree, here is the default coordinate system for the casting manufacturing model. I am happy with that. And then we have the layout. I'm just going to create a casting for a single part, but you have the ability to set a layout for rectangular if you wanted to create multiple castings at the same time. There's also a circular option and a variable option, but I'm just going to use the single layout. I'm happy with this. Let's click the OK button. And we get a warning that the absolute accuracy is going to be changed. And this is fine. It takes a look at the size of my reference model and the size of my manufacturing model and comes up with an appropriate value for the absolute accuracy. I will click the OK button. And then we have the cavity layout menu manager. I can just click done return out of here. If you had the model oriented incorrectly, you could choose to redefine it. Let's click done return in order to close that. Now I'm going to assemble or bring in a workpiece. And the way that you do that is from the die block command. There is a drop down list and the choices here are very similar to the reference model. You could mirror an existing die block. You could create the die block manually inside of the manufacturing model. You can assemble a pre-existing part, or here we have the ability to automatically create a die block. When I click on this icon, it opens up a dialog box. It's going to give the workpiece a default name. You can edit this. And here we have our reference model. You can see an outline in the computer screen of the default size of the workpiece, which is just big enough in order to hold the reference model. The first thing that we need to select is the mold origin. And I'm just going to use the manufacturing model default coordinate system. That's good. Then for the shape, you could use standard rectangular. And then we have the option to use a round workpiece or a custom workpiece. Then we have our set of units. This is good. This is for millimeters. You could also change it to the English system of units. And then for defining the size of the workpiece, you could define a uniform offset from the reference model geometry, but I'm not going to do that. Let's plug in some overall dimension values. And I will use a nice big value, 600 for the X value. Then for the Y value, let's bring this one to a higher number, punch in 400. And then for the plus Z cavity and minus Z core, well, let's add some to this. So 150 for the cavity, 150 for the core. And then we can click on the preview button if you want to see it in the transparent green color. That's fine. Let's click the OK button out of here. And so now we've got our workpiece in the model. Let me turn off my coordinate system display. I really don't need it at this point. And the very last thing I will do in this video for the setup, let's apply some shrinkage in here. And the way that we do that is from the production features, there is a drop down, and then we have shrinkage. And there are two different ways that you can apply shrinkage. You can do it by scaling the model or do it by applying scaling to the dimensions in the model. I'm going to shrink by scale. This opens up a dialog box. You have two different formulas where you could specify your shrinkage factor, where it's one plus S, or you could use one over one minus S, two different techniques. But we need to define our coordinate system. Once again, I will just use the default coordinate system. Oops, gives me a warning that selecting an external coordinate system here may lead to a circular reference. Good warning. Let me use the pick icon and I'm going to go to my reference model and then let's use our coordinate system from there. This is one of the advantages again of using an inheritance feature. You have all the original features from the reference model. And then for the type, you have isotropic. It's checked by default. Here we have forward references. And then we have our shrink ratio. 
Let me plug in a value of 0.02 for that one. There is a preview button, but you might have been able to see that it got a little bit bigger, which will represent, hey, this is the bigger size. And then as it cools, it will contract down to the size of the design model. So I'm happy with that. Let's hit the check mark. And now we've got our design model started off. By the way, you can see the shrinkage feature located inside of the reference model. So that's good for this video. In the next video, we will start designing the sand core to account for the interior volume of the valve body.